ready to start questions. And uh, I appreciate, again, all of you being here. And I know some of you have traveled a ways, and, and uh, we always appreciate that here at the, uh, uh, at the committee. But my specific question uh, for you all when it pertains to the Regulatory Flexibility Act, on, on January 19th, the President reaffirmed the need um, for federal agencies to comply with the, uh, with the act. And my question to you is, have you seen any uh, improvement um, in agency assessment when it comes to small businesses and, and uh, uh, you know, as it pertains to the Regulatory Flexibility Act? And, and I would also be interested in any specific things that's happened in the last year that uh, frustrate you um, for the administration when it comes to uh, uh, the Regulatory Flexibility Act, specific, specific items that have happened to you. And we'll start with Mr. Squires. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to to uh, answer the the first question, uh, the the agency, of course, that we deal primarily with is the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, and as an independent agency, they are are exempt from uh, from some of the the executive orders of, uh, that that control federal agency responses, uh, and so we we have not seen uh, since January. Uh, great improvement in um, in at least the FCC's uh, compliance with the RFA. And um, as an example, and this addresses, I believe, your your second question for for frustration, at least on on my part, is a recent notice of proposed rulemaking uh, currently pending in the the FCC, uh, which is sweeping regulatory change to to our industry pays very scant attention to the initial regulatory flexibility analysis that, that's required under the RFA. Uh, there's just a few paragraphs uh, in, uh, I believe, uh, Appendix H of, of that notice of proposed rulemaking that essentially asks all of us, the small businesses, well, you tell us what, what maybe are some ideas to uh, to reduce the the burden of regulation on you, and and it's my belief that the RFA really places the burden and rightfully places the burden on the agency itself to come up with those uh, creative alternatives, not simply punt in a few paragraphs of a 300-page order uh, the the burden to small businesses such as ours to come up with the uh, with those alternatives. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I I have seen some. Slowdown of uh, you know agency rules, maybe for a little bit more deliberation. Uh, the, the EPA has done some of that. I ha it hasn't seemed to me to be small business focused. It's been more on, on the general policy rather than on the presidential memorandum relating to RegFlex and small business. Um, in terms of what's been, I think, maddening for everybody on the panel is an easy way now for an agency to handle. Uh, the Regulatory Flexibility Act is to say, okay, um, and I, we run into this fairly constantly, uh, yeah, we get it, you're going to get creamed, uh, but we have to. We don't have any alternative. And, and that, that's the sophisticated approach, it sort of, you know, evolved from there's no impact to, uh, you know, you're going to get creamed, we can't do anything about it, and they go to court and uh, agent, the court defers to the agency's rather superficial analysis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would point out uh, a very recent example this month, as a matter of fact, and uh, mentioned in my written and oral testimony, the, uh, the FAA's uh, recent posting of a, uh, a regulatory flexibility analysis as a result of a, writ, a petition for writ of mandamus that ARSA filed uh, back in 2007 um, regarding a, a, their drug and alcohol rules and, and their noncompliance with, uh, with the RFA. Just recently, uh, in response to the, uh, the Court's order, to um, show cause why uh, the writ should not issue, the uh, the FAA basically once again uh, just stated that the uh, the rule will not have a, uh, a significant impact on a significant number of small businesses, and uh, therefore we certify that uh, an analysis will not be required. So I, I think that's a, a no change in in the uh, behavior of agencies, in our opinion. Uh, from the food manufacturing standpoint, we're gearing up for the new FDA regulations that affect businesses like ours. So no real uh, surprise that it's coming. Just want to make sure we have everything ready. So that's anticipated additional regulation. Not that it's bad regulation, but we're just making sure we're prepared. 